Hey there, Joy people. I'm here with Dave Campbell. Yes. Like the soup. Like the, the soup. Founder and lead <laughs> designer behind Taco Cat Go Cheese Pizza and Dolphin Hat Games. That's right. Tell us a little bit about your company. When did it begin? So Dolphin Hat began probably around 2015 okay. or so, 2014. And I, I really started it as like a side hustle. What's your full hustle? Well, it's now my full hustle, but my side hustle at the time, because I was a traveling salesman. For what? Welding supplies. So I was in te technical welding supplies. So I'd go to places like, so I started in Dayton and I'd drive to somewhere like Chicago or I'd drive up to Detroit and I would help somebody like in a factory setting or like in a welding shop with more intricate welding supplies. Like if they had like a more difficult job and we'd have some like special equipment. So that meant that I had a ton of windshield time, driving time. Windshield time? Windshield time, phrase? that's a phrase. Okay. Yeah, yeah, windshield, windshield time. time. Okay. And during that time, I would always be thinking of different games that I could design, Why? different concepts because it's something that I love. From when I was young, some of my best memories are playing games, you know, uh, spending summers playing Monopoly or playing Dungeons and Dragons. These are some of my best memories. Yeah. And so I always loved games. And as I got older, I would think of different concepts and different games that maybe I could make. Oh, okay. And one of the challenges I always had with games or tabletop in general was getting my family to play with me. Why? Because when you bring a tabletop game, typically you bring it to the table and you open it up and it'll have a thick rules packet like yeah. that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so my kids would look at me or my wife would look at me and be like, like, no. No. <laughs> no. So like, I want to play a really big game and they're like, yeah. no. No. So I would try to think of games that I could make that would take away all those barriers, right? Yeah. So what, okay. what if you, could you make a game where you take the rule book and just, right? Yeah. And still have it be accessible for everybody and have a multi-generational game where everybody could laugh. Just get together for like 15 minutes, yeah. have some laughs, yeah. and then get out of there. And so that, that's where Dolphin Hat came from. So you're driving to sell driving. some supplies. Were you thinking about games that you were trying to play with your family and trying to think of ways to simplify them? Yes. Or, yeah, that's what you were thinking. That's exactly it. Yeah. So, so, so I was trying to think of different concepts that would be engaging for my family so right. I wouldn't have to explain long, long rule sets. And I started making them. Can you tell me like the first game that you kind of were inspired by and then the first game that you actually made? Yeah, so I'd say the first game that I was truly, truly inspired by was probably a risk. Oh. Uh, when I was 12, we went to a church camp. Our group got together and uh, we played risk and it was like the older guys in the group and some of the younger guys. Yeah. And uh, I ended up winning that game. And you want to hook somebody into a, like the game world. Right. If they kind of like, have success early on yeah, yeah, and that, that's yeah. kind of what happened yeah, with yeah, risk yeah. so after that i was just completely hooked uh -huh. in so that's like one of my best memories and so a lot of times like i said the reaction that you get when you bring a bigger game like no no yeah. so some of the games that i first started working on were really just kind of quick games like i had a, a family puzzle game i called frog pig pug frog pig frog pug. pig pug so this is like a theme of yours yeah i use oh, yeah. i use these <laughs> These like, things, you know what I mean? So yeah, that was one of my first games. And then where this one came from, I was working on an emoji game and it was kind of like a little emoji Simon Says game. And I had a ton of leftover emojis. And I, about 2017 is when I started working on this one. And I remember it was, I was down in my basement, I was trying to harken back to some of the games I used to play. And one of the ones I used to play was a game called ERS or Slapjack, Egyptian Rat Screw, it's often called. And it's just a big action, hand slapping situation. And I used to love that game. It was huh. intense, no. you know, no. boom, boom, boom. No. And so I went back to some of the emojis and I was like, gosh, what if I replaced some of the numbers with these emojis? And the first one I saw was the taco. And I'm like, well, I think a two is boring. A three yeah, is yeah. boring. Yeah, yeah. What if I placed two with taco? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I think I was hungry because I went to like goat cheese and cheese pizza. But anyways. <laughs> I came up with Taco Cat Go Cheese Pizza, and this game was deceptive because it actually took quite a bit of work. Yeah. And I had to work a lot on like color confusion of this game. You can see like a lot of changing colors yeah. in the backgrounds and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so the first version of this that we played with my family, it had all the same colored backgrounds and things like that. Right. And so I had to work to really kind of change the color. So how backgrounds. do you play this one? Let's so do it. in Taco Cat Go Cheese Pizza, the name of the game actually almost kind of becomes a mantra. So you get everybody sitting around a table. Like we are right now. Right, we are right now. Uh -huh. So 
you split up the cards evenly between the players. Yes. And you take turns putting cards in the middle of the table saying taco. Yeah. And then go. Cheese. And then pizza. So when the word matches the card this lay, we rush to get our hands in the pile. Okay. Last person has to take all the cards. So I was last, yeah, I yeah, have yeah. to take you this. Take both. Okay. <laughs> Very competitive. Yeah, all right, good, 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 good. <laughs> All right, so we'll, we'll go ahead and do that again, but then there's a couple extra rules we're gonna go through real quick. So it goes okay. taco. Cat. Goat. Cheese. Pizza. Taco. Cat. Goat. Cheese. Pizza. Oh, boom, <laughs> perfect, perfect. Okay, so now in the course of this, we had a couple cards that popped up that were not taco, cat, goat, cheese, yeah, pizza. Yeah, it's gorilla. Yep, so the first special card is gorilla. And when gorilla comes up, everybody does this and then hits the pile, mm -hmm. last person has to take but the cards. E e e like no matter time. what's said. Oh, okay, okay. No matter what's said. We ignored it. Hey, we did, we did just okay. so we can get the flavor right. at first. Okay. The next special card is Narwhal. As soon as Narwhal comes out, everybody does this, and then gets your hands on top of the pile. Oh, mm -hmm. and then oh the, so you have to slap for the, the slap, yeah, slap after? Okay. Yeah, because the last person it has to take like the cards. It kind of like ends the game. That's like correct, a, okay. that's correct. And the last special one is Groundhog. As soon as Groundhog comes out, everybody does this, and then hands on top of the pile. Okay, okay, All okay, right? okay, okay. So, now we're ready to go. Okay. All right, and it's go time. All right, so taco. Cat. Go. Cheese. Pizza. Taco. Cat. Go. Ooh. Oh, oh gosh. Oh, God. <laughs> so now you would take these and put them oh, on your back, no. and then you start with taco. Oh, no. Okay. Taco. Cat. Go. Cheese. Pizza. Taco. Cat. Go. Cheese. Oh. Woo! You're you're good. I can tell. Pro level already. I'm aggressive. <laughs> we may play this game at home. Oh, that's great. Right. That's good. So that's okay. So that's taco cat go cheese pizza. And so we did a Kickstarter for this in 2017. At that time, Dolphin Hat was a very small company. We still are relatively small. And all my goal was was just to make games and put them up on Amazon. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hopefully, get my family to play them. That was what I was doing. <laughs> oh that was gonna wants his family to play games that's with it. him. That's it. And then so, but this one has always had a life of its own. <laughs> it's got this little viral nature to it. Yeah, why is that? I, it's it's hard to put my finger on, but I would say you're you're connecting a lot of different senses in one game, right? Mm -hmm. Most board games or, or card games, you're kind of going kind of going back and forth. No one's yeah. really saying anything usually. Right. But with this game, you have a verbal component. Right. You have a physical component, physical component, right? And then you kind of got this little speedy action yeah. that gives people license to be silly yeah. when they wouldn't otherwise have a license to be silly, yeah. right? So like, when are you gonna see grandma and grandpa doing this and right. this and, you know, and then it's good cross-generational game. Right. And then also there's no barrier here. Giant book. Yeah, of a rules. giant book. There's not even no room for a book. Yeah, it, exactly. So it gets a good r rhythm going to it, and you can bring different generations to the table at once. So I want to talk about like when you came out with this game. How sure. did you get it? How, like it has a viral nature, but how did you start that? Like, did you get it placed in retail first? Did you sell it online first? Yeah. When did it pick up? What happened? It was on Amazon first. So we did the Kickstarter. It was a small Kickstarter. Yeah. I think we had like a, I can't remember like 130 backers or something. Very small. Okay. How many? How much money did you raise? couple grand. Okay. And so that enabled me to order the first copies of this game. And the thing that I wanted to do with this game was try to say yes as much as I possibly could to what? everybody. Like, so if somebody's like, hey, I'm going to be doing X and I'm going to sh show this game, I'd be like, yeah, here it is. Okay. Or, hey, I've got a board game bar cafe. Here's the game. We've got a, a library of games. Here, here at the library, we, we give up. Yes. You know? And luckily it's a... a cost effective enough that I can just do that type right. of thing. The other thing that I wanted to do is I gave it to as many board game cafes as I could. Yeah. All right. So I got it into as many hands as I could and I hit the street. I went to board game shops and just went and sold it. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, and so one of the big breakthroughs with this game was I sent it to board game cafes across the country, just blind, put it in the mailer, sent it out. And I got a call, this was a couple months into having Taco Cat up on Amazon. I got a call from a company called Vat19 and they do YouTube videos and they also have their own little shop. And they called me up and said, hey, we played your game at a board game cafe next to us called Pieces Board Game Cafe. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I didn't know who they were. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. And they're like, hey, we would like to sell this on our website. I'm like, oh, great. You know, so I sold them some copies. And a couple weeks later, they called me and they said, hey, we'd like to do a video for this. I'm like, oh, that sounds neat. And so I went on their YouTube to look at their channel to see if it fit, you know? And they were getting like 5 million, 6 million views. Oh, 
Oh my God. And so I was like, oh yeah, okay, yeah. let's figure something out here. Do this like ASAP. Yeah, and so they did. And so that was kind of like a real launch point for us. Oh. They, their video, I think to this day is like 6 million views, 7 million views, something like that. And then so it started to snowball and I was able to work, I think the first major retail we got into was Barnes and Noble. And because yeah. it started climbing the Amazon ranks. Right. And because I was I was burning a little bit on Amazon, I was, I was doing some advertising on Amazon, pay-per-click stuff, you know what I mean? And it started to rise up the ranks and just its own viral nature, people were buying it whenever they played it. And so it shot us up the ranks on Amazon. And so the retailers took notice. Like, what is this game that's like cooking up on Amazon? And, and they reached out to you, the retailers? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yep. This was another lesson yeah. of building the brand. Yeah. Like you. It's so funny, like without it really intending to, like you wanted to create a game that was simple enough that your family would play it. But that's actually also a great characteristic of any mass market game that it's easy to play. Yeah. So you created this easy to play and then you created a low price point, which yes. is great for a starting item. Yeah. So anybody can, even if they don't know the company, they're like, we'll take a risk. It's $10. Yeah. I'll take a risk. <laughs> and so with Taco Gag Goji's Pizza, I've also, you know, tried to keep the commitment yeah. even during this more difficult time period where there's pressures on us right. to raise price. Yeah. You know, I want to be a value leader if I can. Right. And that, to me, that keeps doors open, mm -hmm. you know, and that gets more people to the, the table. So, you know, even though we have to, we have some of the same pressures as other people with shipping and with cost rising, uh, hopefully we can make up with the volume and being a value leader. Right. That's, that's how I see it. But it sounds like you have a really strong identity of what your company stands for. Yes. Right? You want to bring more people to the table. More people that's why to the it's table. a simple game. Yes. That's even probably why it has a simple name. Yes. Right? Yes. And then, so you want to keep your price low for I that. I want to keep my price low. I want to take away barriers, get more people to the table, yeah. make the games accessible and simple again. So we can just, so let's spend 10, 15 minutes together, have some laughs. Yeah. And then we can go do other things that we want to do. Where does the name Dolphin Hat come from? <laughs> this is a, a total side question. Yeah, so some of your viewers might not like this answer, but I happen to be a big time Miami Dolphins fan. Yeah, so I lived about six years down in Florida and I grew up in upstate New York as a Dolphins fan, big Dan Marino guy. Is that why the colors are like that? That's why the, you, you can see the colors kind of like oh this. God. And so typically <laughs> when you'd see me not in a work setting, I'd be wearing a Miami Dolphins hat. Wow. And so I was trying to think of like a whimsical that is kind of thing. Hilarious. I'd be like, I was like, oh, dolphin's hat, dolphin, dolphin hat, dolphin wearing a hat. So that's where it comes from. Okay. Yeah. And what other games does dolphin hat carry? So we try to focus in on family. So fast, okay. fun, and friendly. That's fast, my fun, whole thing. Friendly. Fast, fun, and friendly. So we have a game right now called Steal the Bacon, which is a lot of fun. And it's a game where we're matching pancake and waffle cards. If my pancake matches your pancake, we're gonna be in a race to steal the bacon that's in the middle of the table. So that's super fun. We also have another game called On Purpose where we're racing to dress a dolphin in a tuxedo. So yes. he's got like different matching patterns on the tuxedo, pad, argyle, paisley, and polka dot. And so we're just simply racing to, to, to dress this dolphin. And then finally, we got this new game called Gimme That. Uh -huh. And this game, it, we're all racing to count potatoes on a spud sheet. Right. Right. And <laughs> if you get to all 100 potatoes first, you win. The problem is everybody's trying to do the same thing and there's only one pencil available. Oh. So the game okay. is spent fighting over a pencil so right. you can fill out your spud sheet. Okay. So that's any party game, give me that. Bye. Where do you get these random ideas? When I saw Taco Cat Don't Cheese Pizza, I was like, so brilliant because in the toy industry so often like different characters and graphics are, are trending year after yeah. year. And tacos were huge for a while, cat for a huge while, yeah. then they got into goat yoga. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I was like, this, is this an SEO dream? Yeah, yeah. And so like, and then now this is like a potato, you got yeah. still the bacon. So it's like, where do you yeah. get random ideas? I think usually I'm just hungry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it's hard, hard to put my finger on. Yeah. But you know, to me, a lot of it will just harken back to something from my past or something that resonates for some reason. You know, this one, of course, we've got the palindrome of Taco Cat and then, you know, cheese pizza. They, they just kind of, just kind of, float out of my brain. And then Steal the Bacon, I used to be a den leader for Cub Scouts and we'd actually play a game called Steal the Bacon where we'd take like a rolled up sock yeah, or a, yeah. and we'd put it in the middle of the gym. Yes, yeah, so I remember the Steal the Bacon. Yeah, and I'd yeah. be like, okay, group two and group four. And the, the kids would run after the, right. the yes. sock yeah, 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 and then you yeah, yeah. tag the other person. So yeah. it's kind of like the same flavor, but it's yeah. an actual piece of bacon in the middle of the table and yeah. you're 
matching pancake cards instead of calling out two and four and, yeah. and stuff and like that. And you have no prior experience to a, like a professional game design. No, no, no. Just it's just somebody, I just, you know, just somebody that likes games a lot, play, has played a lot of games and just wanted to make them accessible, that's it. What do you see as the benefit of coming to like an in-person event again like this one? To me, it's where the rubber hits the road. I can see reactions. I can get my games into people's hands and I can do the work that maybe other people might not be willing to do. And I believe in that as far as like Dolphin Hat and getting the game in other people's hands. These games do no good for Dolphin Hat or for my customers sitting in a warehouse. Right. I need to get these into people's hands so they can play them and then they'll share them with their family and then hopefully that'll translate into another sale. That goes back to your mission, getting yeah. more people around the table. Yeah. This theme this month I think has been in my podcast has been very focused on like having a clear defined mission yeah, and how it makes it easier to make decisions. So like, should I be a part of this trade show? Well, if it's important for you to get in front of your consumers and get more people around the table, it becomes an easy yes. Yes, you know? yep. that, that's, that is exactly how I feel about yeah. it. You know, the, the more people I can meet, the more games I can get into hands, right. the better off Dolphin Hat will be and the more sustainable hopefully this is. And, and frankly, to me, just because the kind of person I am, I like to see the smiles. Yeah. You know, I like to have the laughs and the interactions and that helps propel me and gets me excited to bring out the next release or, you know, move Taco Cat even higher. And that's, you know, a big thing is these shows are a big thing. And I'm willing to try just about any show. Okay. As long as there's people, oh, if you know. York now has a toy section this year. Oh yeah, nice, yes. It's new. Yeah. Uh, that's happening like February. So I, I do want to ask this question. Have you experienced any real struggle since you've been oh. starting this company? Because yeah. I know you had a full-time gig before. So yeah. I'm wondering if the struggle happened while you had the support of full-time. Did you have struggles while building? Yeah, it? I've had quite a few struggles. Yeah. I think that's what people typically don't see yeah. behind the scenes. But you know, I, I had a full-time job and it was a good job in what I was doing. And it was a company that I was running. Yeah. And it was the difference between liking something that you do and having just a true love and passion for this. But the struggle came in is that I, even though we did a Kickstarter for say for something for this, it was very small. Yeah. I had to risk a lot to even start. So all the capital that was raised was raised by me for the most part with outside yeah. of the small Kickstarters. And all the connections were made by me like Pressing the button to send money to the factory in China was just, you know, that's a lot of money. I don't know yeah. this person. And they, yeah. they've ended up being a great partner yeah. and taking money from my savings and, and doing this. There's been a lot of risks on the way. And then not only that, but, you know, as a family man that has also has four kids. Four kids? Yeah, do, doing a full-time job, that, running a business, and then trying to do a side hustle that becomes a full-time gig. Right. And then now trying to grow this company and lift this company up you constantly have to bet on yourself. Yeah. It's a, always, I'm always re-upping the bet. Always re, and the bets just get bigger and bigger and bigger, but I so believe in what we're doing and I so believe in this product, I'm willing to make that big bet every single time. Why do you feel so, how do you motivate yourself and believe in yourself so much? What we do, whether it's in the toy industry or in the games, it's such a blessing to bring like happiness to people. You know, we see the laughs, it is a driving factor, you know, and to me to see that and to have it, you know, in reality in people's faces is a truly wonderful thing. Yeah. And so that just just drives me. And, you know, luckily we're seeing the, some of the fruits of that. We're, we're, yeah. we're, we're starting to grow, we're growing in the marketplace. We've got a good name, we've got a good growing brand. Yeah. And it's hard to build a brand. We know that yes. probably better than anybody, <laughs> yes. right? Yeah. It's hard to build, really build a brand. So, yeah. you know, I'm thankful for it, but that does drive me. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing all that. Yeah, and I, thank I you, I thank you for what you do. Right? I guess I, I, love, I love the podcast, it's awesome. You're welcome. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I want to ask you our closing questions. I kind of already know the answer to this, but what toy board game blew your mind as a kid? Blew my mind as a kid. I would say, still to this day, Dungeons and Dragons oh. for me. I have very fond memories. I'd stay up till two in the morning playing with my friend across the street. And my, 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 yeah, we, we play Dungeons and Dragons. And the thing that still amazes me about that game is it exists solely in your head. Yeah. It's a role-playing game. Right. Yes, you have the structure, and it's all how you interpret that structure. You can play very tight rules or you can play loosely, but it, it exists in my head and in your head individually. And then to together, we can grow this 
you know, incredible narrative. And to me, that that's like a great memory, staying up all hours and night. My mom and dad be like, what are you doing over there You're so late? And it'd be one of those things like saying, oh, playing Dungeons and Dragons? <laughs> and last, do you have any advice for anybody that's thinking about doing what you did? Starting a side hustle and hopefully yeah. turning it into something full time. Yeah, I, I would say just, you know, believe and try. You know, I, yeah. I think so many people get to that point where you either take the leap or you, you don't. Yeah. And at some point you have to make the decision to at least try. And you don't want to go through life and regret not trying. Right, right. So I think that's, I can't remember the, what the statistic was. I just heard not so long ago. I think it's like 97% of people won't try to do the thing. That's not saying everybody will succeed in that. Right, no, but of course, yeah. to at least give yourself the opportunity. So yeah. I guess that's my only advice is to, to try. Make the connections, connect with people, yeah. you know? And a lot of people help me along the way and I try to help other people and try to make those connections as well. Thank you so much. Yeah. Where can people purchase? Amazon, Go Target, Walmart, uh, Barnes & Noble, Kohl's, Meyer, a website, dolphinhat.com. Dolphinhat.com to learn yep. more about Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza. And, and give, give me that. that. Yep. And steal the bacon. Steal bacon. On porpoise. On porpoise. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here Thank you so much. Oh, pleasure. pleasure. Thank you so yeah, much. Take care. Yeah.